What's up everybody? Uh, today I'd like to go over your G blue scale in the Altissimo register. Uh, hopefully you've checked out my other video. You can check it out here. If I figure out how to make it do that and then you can click on it and go back. But uh, first I just want to hit a few things that I talked about before to review. One is your Magic Altissimo fingering number one, which is the front key. Magic Altissimo fingering number two. I call it split F. It's just like F with the octave key but you lift the two fingers so you have one three and four so I call that split F uh, just like F with the two finger up or your C key up and last but certainly not least your high F sharp key so uh, there's a lot to cover with this scale so I'm gonna pretty much just get right to it inherently there is an instability with using this front key for G. I'm going to show you six or seven different ways to approach this uh, that G, just that G itself. So uh, the first and most common way that people play this is to just use the front key here. Now a trick that I learned from a guy 20 some years ago, he taught me that if you press this key down and you get this top key here, which is the F palm key to open just a little bit it makes that note a lot more stable and easier to come out unfortunately 999 saxophonists out of a thousand because of the instability of that note will have to scoop into that note in order to get that G to come out it drives me crazy after a while I don't really like to timbre that G it's a little weaker and ultimately you wind up having to affect the rest of your altissimo in order just to get that note to come out so I use a different fingering for that so uh, that's one fingering. I'll, I'll play that later. I'm just going to go through them right now. So that's one finger. Another thing you can do in addition to this key is adding the high F sharp key. I hope you got one on your horn. Um, another fingering is B natural. You overblow your B natural. If you've been practicing your overtone series, you overblow that B natural and there's a G in there. It's really weak. It's horrifically unstable. Sometimes I use it because it's, it's just easy. Bam, one button. The one that I use the most often is the B natural, add high F sharp key. This is the one that I feel is the most stable. Uh, it's extraordinarily reliable. It's a little awkward because you have your F sharp key down, but it works. And it's the one that I use the most. Basically, the, the front key and the B natural with the high F sharp key is the one that I use the most. Uh, another fingering for G is just like F with the octave key but you add your side C. This one runs really sharp. So, and there's a really nice multiphonic that goes along with it. So naturally, you're gonna wanna lip that down to make sure that that's in tune. Or if you're just using it as an effect with the, uh, uh, with the side C, with that multiphonic, then obviously you can use it hover. Your musical taste allows you to do it. Now, the two really, really complicated ones or uh, first let me just tell you I'll go more into this when I get to F sharp but the first fingering that I learned for F sharp uh, as an altissimo note it's really awkward so it's basically your split F one four sorry one three and four just like F with the second finger up add the low C key and add the low B flat key this is the fingering that I use for high F sharp more than any other one it's dead on reliable it's solid it's got a lot of power and meat to it it's easy to go from that note to other altissimo notes uh, if you use that fingering one three four low C and low B flat and you add your side F sharp not the high F sharp add your side F sharp there's another way to play G there's a multiphonic that you can get with that one and the other one which is even more awkward than that one is I don't even have a name for this one. It's one, three, six, add the F sharp key, add the low C key, and add the low C sharp key. That one is just like the previous G that I told you about, and you get a multiphonic, but you get a different multiphonic that's with that one. Those two are real funk, power hitting Gs power I'm gonna say power hitting I can't use the other word but those two really add a lot of punch really add a lot of power 
and uh, I use those when I'm just hitting punchy notes and whatnot. I usually use the B natural with the high F sharp key or the front key to play more melodic things like that. So let's get started. I'll play uh, I'll play these different notes before I actually play the scale because there's two ways that I actually approach the G blue scale in the altissimo range. So let's get started. So here we go. G natural with the front key. G natural with the front key, add high F sharp key. G natural with just the B natural key. This one I don't like, it's a bit unstable. Uh, B natural with the high F sharp key. This is my favorite one. And uh, now we get to uh, some weird ones. Before I show you what these are, uh, which is F with the side C, you can get a nice multiphonic without playing the overtone. Uh, it sounds like this. You can already start to hear the G that's in there. It's going to run sharp though. So you can hear, can you hear the G? There's a G that's in there with that one. All right. This is the, uh, the split F, which is one, three, and four. Add low C, add low B flat, add side F sharp. Now, just like with the previous G fingering that I showed you, uh, if you inch your way up from the bottom, from the fundamental up, you can get a nice uh, multiphonic that comes out with that. So the lowest part, the lowest part will be. other one which is really really weird is one three six high F sharp key low C and low C sharp I don't really have a name for this one yet because this fingering is just awkward but it's got a lot of power to it and it works so I'm going to show it to you uh, again you can start doing the same thing starting with the lowest partial or the lowest fundamental that you can know and then use your overtone uh, lessons or overtone uh, techniques to get the higher note, that G to come out. And you hear that nice multiphonic that pops out with it. So let's get to the scale that we're going to use to play our G blues. So here we go with our G scale. Once we get to our palm D, this is where the magic happens. So if I don't want to use the front key to play G, then I'm not going to approach it with this front F. I'm going to use the other F that I showed you in the other video, which is exactly like G sharp, add high F sharp key, and then we're, to go to G, we're going to use the G that I just showed you, which is B natural and the high F sharp key. And when you're going bo back and forth between those two notes, you can just hold down the high F sharp key and just go between what, would, what feels like G sharp and B natural. the other way with the front now obviously from D from the D then you would go to your front F to G so in this case I'm going to use the one that I like to use the most which is going to be G sharp to B natural holding the high F sharp key which gives us our F to G so from this G this is where we're going to use that rolling the palm keys technique in order to play B flat I'm going to play I'm going to finger the palm D. In order to play C, I'm going to finger palm E flat. In order to play C sharp, I'm going to add the side E key, just like you're playing high E. And then I'm going to add the F key, just like I'm playing high F, in order to play D. Sounds like this. We go to our F and our G. I use split F in order to play F, which is one, three, and four. And then G above that is two and three. Sounds like this. Once we get to that G. Piece of 
obviously K. So from that G up to the top of my range is the D. So I'm going to show you, tell you what the fingerings are, and then I'll play it. So it's going to be G, which is 2 and 3, uh, C natural with the side C in order to play B flat. This is another point where the energy level kicks up. So you feel the next, you have to just kick it up to the next uh, harmonic from when you get to this note, the A, and then add side C in order to play B flat. And then C, which will be the front key, C sharp, add the F sharp key to the front key, and then two and three in order to play D. So. So, uh, another way to approach that scale is to use, uh, instead of rolling the palm keys, like we did from uh, B flat all the way up to our D, uh, this is the way I generally play it. I usually don't use that method unless I'm playing it real fast and I'm just showing off or whatever. But we go from our F, uh, which is like G sharp with the high F sharp key, um, hold the high F sharp key and go to B natural so we get our F to G just like I showed you before and then from there we can go to our two and three with the palm D key to play B flat this is a very common way that a lot of people play this B flat you don't necessarily need to play to hold down two and three but it affects the pitch it stops this B flat from riding high so from there we go to our C which is our split F fingering one three and four in this case I would leave the three key off so I'm just playing one and one or technically one and four in order to play the C natural and then lift the four key so you're just fingering B natural in order to play C sharp from there I would add side C in order to play D so you're playing your fingering side C and you're overblowing to the D and then from there we would use our split F one three and four to play F and then our two and three to play the G so uh, what, I'll go into this more when we get to our B flat, but I also want to show you another finger for B flat, which is three, four, and five. And uh, you can kick start into that or scoop into it by kicking the C key right here. So that B flat is three, four, and five, and you can scoop into it uh, with the C key. I don't usually use that B flat, but we'll get into that later when I talk about B flat. So uh, here's the scale. Once we get to our D, that's where the magic happens. From this uh, G to, I'm going to use the two and three B flat. So yeah, that's real simple. Uh, I like to use this one when you're going between 1 and 1 or 1 and 4 to B natural and then from the B natural add side C to get that. That's the blue area of the scale. Uh, so that's a lot of fun. I hope that's a lot of help to you. So let's review. So thanks for tuning in everybody. I hope that we've uh, been able to discuss what is in my opinion the weakest part of altissimo playing on a tenor saxophone which is that front G and giving you a lot more options about how to approach that note uh, there's a variety of ways you can play that note and then being able to apply it to something instead of just oh here's a fingering for this note here's a fingering for that note like here's a scale you can use and go out and gig it because fundamentally it's all pretty simple stuff you just once you pretty much have your autism on your belt then you just go out and use it so uh, next time we're gonna go up another fourth and then we're gonna go to C and that one is gonna be not as complex as this one because of the many ways around it but it's still gonna be pretty complex so not harder just more complex so thanks for tuning in hopefully I'll get all of these and all this kind of stuff together so uh, you can go back and forth between different scales and uh, different videos so thanks for tuning in see ya